Hey everyone, so anxiety freaking sucks. It is the worst feeling and most of us have it at some point, but some of us are more blessed than others with anxiety. So I wanted to make this video just to give you some ways and things that you can do in everyday life that can help you with anxiety and to help you deal with it and to just feel a little bit more calm in your day-to-day -day life. I really hope that this video helps you, so let's get to it. So one of my favorite tips is actually to just record yourself blurting things out to like a voice memo or on like just a video recording on your phone and I know it sounds weird but a lot of the times when we're super anxious we just need to get a lot of things off our chest. Sometimes you know someone want to talk to or someone we trust isn't immediately available. Be worried that you don't want them to judge you for how you're feeling no matter what it is. Um, it's just like a super shame free zone and a, and a really great way to get what's weighing on you off your chest. So what I do is I just like pull out my phone when I'm feeling really anxious and I either record record my voice or I just record a video of myself and whether I'm like crying, whether I just had a panic attack, it doesn't matter. I'm probably never even going to go back and watch it, but it just helps me so much in that moment to be able to just get things off and feel like a little bit of release of emotion and to feel like okay, it's out there in the world and now I don't have to carry it all on my shoulders. So another thing that is always great to do when you are anxious and sometimes it just comes naturally is cleaning. We all know how good we feel when we have like a freshly cleaned room or bathroom or whatever. It's just the best feeling ever. Cleaning gets you moving around a lot without really thinking about it. Like sometimes when we're anxious or especially if we're anxious and depressed, it's so hard to like leave your apartment or your room if you can like afford to stay home. It's, it's so much easier to just want to stay home and do nothing and watch Netflix and not think about life. Cleaning Cleaning is a really great way to at least get moving around your house and moving um, releases endorphins. Another reason why cleaning is so great is that you're showing yourself that you take care of your things and you're showing yourself that it's important to focus on like living simply and you're kind of checking in with yourself like a lot of the times you know if we're really anxious about like money the first thing that we do is just don't look at our bank account or you know if we're anxious about like studying we'll still just end up procrastinating so much even even though we know it's like the worst thing that we could possibly do so um, I totally understand and I like spent forever running away from things but it really doesn't help and sometimes just addressing something head first is really the best and only way that you're gonna stop feeling super anxious and stressed about it um, but cleaning is a really great way to do something productive but not deal with anything super super heavy for the most part you know you're just picking things up freshening your space and you're not worried about life-altering decisions but you're also sending the message to yourself that you're taking taking care of yourself you're taking care of your space you respect your things you you value your items, you value your environment, and under all of that, you know, you're showing yourself that you care about yourself. Affirmations, you, I talk about them all the time on this channel and on my Instagram. You know, saying things like, I am safe, I am safe, I am safe. Um, even if, you know, you're kind of saying it in like a frantic way at first, just allow yourself to say it and slowly your mind will get the message. Like, sometimes we have to tell our minds how we want them to feel. Um, and you can kind of retrain your thoughts so that you don't automatically always jump to, you know, the most fear-inducing thing or the, you know, idea that makes you the most anxious. Repeating affirmations really is helpful. You can say, I am safe, I am calm, I am in control, um, I am grounded, and all of these things really, really help. If you know you're not really sure about affirmations yet, you can describe your environment out loud, especially if you, you know, are at home and you're having a panic attack, or you know, you're able to get away to like a bathroom, somewhere where you're like relatively safe and you're not, you know, in immediate physical danger. Um, just take a little moment to breathe and kind of just focus on the present moment so whether you can say it out loud or whether you're in public and you need to just think it just start thinking different things about what color the ground is are you on the pavement are you inside are you outside um, I'm sure you've heard therapists talk about you know when you're having a panic attack they'll tell you to you know name five things you can see four things you can smell three things you can taste etc etc um, so really just connecting to your senses and finding any way that you can to connect to the present moment really helps and that's why my Mindfulness is so important because you can, you know, connect to exactly what's happening around you and normally that sense of safety is something we can make ourselves feel and make our brain understand. 
repeating Om and just kind of chanting it is really great, A, because it gives you something to focus on, um, something that's tactile, something that you're tangibly doing, which is, you know, speaking um, or chanting. And it also gives you a place to focus your thoughts. You're trying to just say this word, you're trying to kind of feel your own vibration. And it's so simple. It's something that even when you're not in the mood to do anything, you're not in the mood to take care of yourself, it's something that you can do from bed, from anywhere. Some of the reasons why chanting this can be especially beneficial is because it gives you a chance to lower your heart rate and to really calm down. It gives you a chance to take some really deep breaths to support that long sound that you're chanting. And I like to just make it as long as possible. I don't, you know, just say, oh, I like actually kind of draw the word out but the reason that this is helpful is because it allows you to um, take really deep breaths which then kind of calms down your fight or flight reflex and instead allows you to just kind of focus and think calmly and clearly again and it really kind of takes you out of the physical reaction of anxiety because again anxiety has a lot of physical manis manifestations and it is a physical process so um, making sure that you're kind of aligning your body with things that don't feed the anxiety like shallow breaths and a really high heart rate and instead you're focusing on lowering your heart rate and you know deepening your breaths and really slowing down your breathing as well a lot of that can kind of train your body to calm down the anxiety calm down that physical process of fear and start to just kind of live in the moment again and that's really really helpful when you're feeling anxious There's actually been studies on how repetitive tasks and different things that cause repetition um, can benefit anxiety because that buildup of stress that's going on in your mind starts to be released when you're doing these passive repetitive tasks. So a repetitive task is basically something that will calm the mind down and will give the message to the body to also calm down because it allows the mind to enter this kind of subconscious passive state. So you might have heard of something called flow or creatives being in flow um, and I don't mean yoga specifically but yoga can be a part of this but being in flow is basically when you're you know if you're a writer or a painter no matter what the form of art is you're just kind of in this almost like a trance where you're just working but you're not thinking about it um, and if you're curious about it or curious about different ways that you can achieve flow I wrote a really great blog post um, on it so I will link that in the description below but it the state of flow basically allows your mind to take a back seat just kind of allows your body to move um, and to do so in a really calm orderly state so you this could be knitting it could be crocheting it could even be something like swimming or you know just shooting hoops by yourself so it basically allows you to kind of enter a trance where you really don't have to overthink anything or directly deal with the situation that you're getting really anxious about but instead you can just allow your mind and your body to relax um, and what you're doing doesn't have to be productive if all you can really do is just like throw a ball against the wall or you know play with a fidget spinner it's fine as long as it's reducing your anxiety that is the priority here and that is honestly something productive in itself because you can go back to your normal life when you're not feeling super anxious and worried and just constantly panicking Really tactile things are great for anxiety, especially because anxiety has you like up here, you are like going out of your mind with terrible thoughts and you're all in your imagination and your feels and it is really hard to get out of that. So doing things that kind of help connect you to the present moment and are really tactile can help you feel a lot more in control and a lot more on top of your anxiety. So one of the things that you can do is actually called grounding. So no matter where you live, you can find some grass or maybe some sand. Just go, go outside and walk in it barefoot. You can go to a park, you can go to your backyard, you can go to a little patch, you know, by the sidewalk. It really doesn't matter, but just finding a way to be barefoot outside um, on the natural earth and it sounds really random and it sounds really simple there's actually a whole science behind it it basically transfers the electrons from the earth into your body so it really does actually give you like this physical boost of energy you feel connected to something bigger than yourself you kind of start feeling safe and your thoughts kind of start to melt away as well I've had the experience of walking on a beach or walking in wet sand and it just feels so good and you're just not really 
thinking about anything because you're kind of just in the moment and that is what um, grounding or earthing is supposed to do for you it's supposed to pull you back into the moment take you out of your you know thoughts and just allow you to kind of breathe again so I just wanted to pop in um, one more time and say that we talked about a lot of different ways to prevent anxiety, but one more tip of uh, final advice I have is that you are not your anxiety. You are so much more than that, and you are not just your thoughts. So regardless of what's going on with your thoughts, even if you're anxious about, you know, your job or what you're going to do after graduating or, you know, it doesn't matter what your anxieties are about and they can be perfectly valid. They could be so real and the reality of it all is what is making you so anxious and so scared. In our society, are constantly taught that, you know, we are what we think, we are what we do, we are, you know, made up of like, what we're physically or mentally thinking about or doing and the intellect is so important in our society and obviously education is amazing and being smart is amazing but a lot of these practices are also really important in just um, preventing anxiety as well because you're allowing yourself to connect with that deeper part of yourself that sometimes ends up being for granted because we have so much going on we're so busy we're always on and we don't find that time to just kind of disconnect and live slowly but you are a deeper person if you don't think for a few minutes you're not dead you know what I mean you are still alive and you're still functioning and you're still the exact same person so it's really the idea of just tapping into that person when you're not constantly thinking when you're not always doing when you're not always running around that gives you an insight into what it really even means to be a human and I know this is all getting kind of deep but I just want you to know for sure that you are more than your thoughts you are more than what's going on inside of your head and use any of these tips to you know calm down when you're feeling anxious but things like meditation and things like finding flow are ways that you can also prevent anxiety by just checking in with yourself every day and allowing yourself to not have to think. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this made you feel a little bit better and help you have a better grasp on what to do when you're feeling really anxious. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps my channel out. And since I'm starting out, I would really appreciate it. I have that blog post on finding flow, um, which I'll link down below. And I'm also a worthiness coach, which is a life coach, um, but I focus on helping you grow and cultivate your self-worth. So if you are interested in working with me, I am currently taking clients and I offer a free consultation call for every single person that I work with. So um, you will find all of those details down below. And if you would like to find me, again, I'm at betigrowup.com. I hope you have calmer days ahead of you. Bye.